Welcome back. Things are looking a bit tidier than last time. Part 6 was initially planned to be about purchasing a welder, but then I realised the car is sat on a bench in the workshop and that's not going to make working on it very easy, or safe. So after a lot of thought I decided to get myself a rollover jig and need to box up some of the parts out of the way to make some room. The workshop looks a lot better of late even though I'm having to share it with my wood workshop. My limited garage tools are now organised into one area. I've added a few car related items to make it look more like a garage than a workshop and intend to add a few more things to help motivation. So the rollover jig is on its way which means I've got to box all these bits up and find somewhere to put all the other stuff that's too big to fit into the boxes. For such a small car it takes up a lot of room. So the delivery arrived on the day promised. Unfortunately I have not finished the driveway yet so the courier was unable to get the pallet up to the garage door, but that wasn't a major problem, it just meant unpacking it on the drive. I purchased the rollover jig from the aptly named site rolloverjigs.com. Having spoken to a few people with the new version jig, they seemed happy enough to recommend the product so I made the purchase and kept my fingers crossed. Delivery didn't come cheap and if I lived closer I would have collected it myself to save a bit of money. Whilst the jig looks solid enough, it's not really coated how I'd have imagined it to be with lots of bare metal showing. I guess ultimately that won't matter to most and it's likely to get bashed about, but I'm quite fussy so I decided to paint it first with some smooth black hammerite. The new jig comes welded so there's not much work involved in assembly, although that said I struggled to follow the instructions correctly and initially built it slightly wrong. The wheels that come with the jig are quite sturdy and two out of the four are lockable. It comes with instructions and to be fair once you've built one you probably only need to glimpse at them for reference. But having never built one before and faced with a whole load of nuts and bolts I found following the instructions difficult and at times I used the wrong bolts or fastenings. I did lay out the bolts to try and cross reference but it wasn't clear at times which bolts or which nuts to use so occasionally I had to guess which did lead to a few errors in assembling the jig. What made this particularly hard for me was a lack of space that I had to work in. I underestimated how much room the small car would need and having to brush closely past a rusty old mini means that several times I'd ripped my jump on a sharp edge or I'd catch the loops of my work pants and it all added up to the frustration of assembling something that I had no idea how to build. But I'm guessing this will be a familiar story to most of us with small workshops and it's something I'll have to get used to. I also had the issue with the table that the car I sat on which was getting in the way but at the same time it was also helpful as I didn't have to lift the shell too far. Now originally I'd planned on making this a bit of a how to video, but the lack of space combined with the fact that I'd made so many errors during construction meant that it wouldn't be that great of an instructional. 
So instead, here's a bit of footage of the assembly, but please note that I made a few errors here and I had to fix those mistakes once I'd realised that some of the bolts were in the wrong places. Also, I did have to tweak the jig a little to fit the car. It was getting very late, possibly gone midnight, and I hadn't managed to get the jig working correctly. So I decided to tidy up, put everything back on the shelves that I'd just fitted, and call it quits for the night. Ok, so after a tidy up and a bit of a shift around, here is the jig. In the end I put down the instructions and pretty much guessed at how it should be assembled. I may have added washers where they weren't intended but to me it made sense to have them there. I also swapped a few bolts around as I preferred them to have a few threads spare at the end so I do need to still add some bolts to the bottom rail which is just temporarily fixed. One thing I did wrong when I misread the instructions was in balancing the car correctly. The instructions recommend three from the top at the front and three from the bottom at the rear. I originally put both at 3 from the top and it was very difficult to turn the car. I've now set it up as per instructions and it's definitely easier although it still needs fine tuning. The car rotates and can be locked in several positions. This is where correct balancing is important so not to add strain to the parts unnecessarily. Overall I'm quite impressed with the jig. It could certainly be made better by adding a finish to the metal and deburring some of the parts. Maybe adding end caps in places. But that would be for aesthetic purposes only, and wouldn't improve the functionality of the jig itself. And these changes would no doubt increase the cost, and of course there's always the option to make the changes yourself if needs be. One thing that would help is improvements to the instructions that came with it. To some it may be obvious how to build it, but for others maybe not so. But ultimately, once the jig is built, it's built. There's very little maintenance other than to make sure that everything stays tight and it stays correctly balanced. I'm not sure how confident I would be working underneath knowing it's just two M16 bolts holding it up, but I guess a few well placed axle stands or similar would solve that issue. All in all I'm very happy with the jig. It does exactly what it says on the tin and at this stage I certainly couldn't make a better one, and would I want to given the price to buy it. It makes access to all the panels so much easier and the beauty of this jig is that it allows me to move it around the workshop and hopefully outside for when I do all the messy work like grinding and sanding. So the next step for me is to source a welder and get started on repairing or replacing the bodywork. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you all in episode 7.